All right, everybody. So we'll kick it off now. Good morning. Uh, welcome back to the Musician Emergency Response Program hosted by Backline and the Motown Accelerator. So the Backline team is myself. I'm Brian, the program manager, and I'll have Meg and Sway introduce themselves. Hey, guys. My name is Meg Rodriguez. I'm the program director for the Milwaukee program. Hey everybody, um, my name is Sway. I am the director for Motown Accelerator here in Detroit. Thanks for coming back and joining us again. All right, and so at Backline, we work within communities to strengthen and support the local music industries in respect of artists and connect them with local and national experts to further their careers as musicians. So obviously we have a program in Milwaukee, Detroit, and we also have Cleveland launching later this year. So this program is on week two uh, in its webinars and one-on-one -on -one office hours meant to help our artists navigate the current COVID-19 outbreak. Um, so we have sent around some emails about the office hours. We'll continue to do so, but those are basically 25, 30 minute time slots where you can ask any questions you have about anything currently happening and changes to the industry or your approach to it during this time or just general questions about your career. And we'll wrap those up on April 17th. So week two, um, today's day one of week two, we have uh, Kenita Hickman, who's the Director of Artist Support and Outreach at Imagine MKE. So this will be a Wisconsin specific presentation about different resources that artists have access to, uh, both in Milwaukee and Wisconsin, but some, some national resources as well. Next we'll have Mike Merriman from PAR3, that's a business management firm out in LA. We'll be going over some personal finance stuff. And we do have another listening session today with Mark Exit Goodchild. He's producer, engineer, and a and with uh, 23 Grammy nominations. And then on Wednesday, we'll have Mark Byers, who's the GM at Motown Records. He's talking about the music industry response to COVID-19. At noon central time that day, we have Ami Betty, who's a licensed therapist. She'll be talking about a lot of mental health stuff uh, in ways that you can kind of stay in shape mentally during this, this tough time. And then that day we have Leonard Brooks, who's an artist manager in A&R. Uh, finally, Friday, uh, we have Detroit specific health resources. So if you think back to last week, we did Milwaukee specific health resources. Uh, first thing, next we'll move over to music admin with Eddie Sanders, who's an attorney out of Chicago. We'll be going over Harry Fox, Sound Exchange, some PROs, and then uh, we'll, we'll give a short closing, some next steps, office hours, and everything else uh, that we've talked about. Um, cool, so that's the run of the show for this week. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the office hours are a chance for you to, to get with our staff and ask some questions about uh, you know, everything that's going on right now, but also you know, your career at large. Um, we have sent those links around, so continue to look for those. And for listening sessions, we'll put this up each day, but um, jot this down for today. So it's submityourmusic2020 gmail.com. And if you could submit it as artist name, genre, and city, that would be great. Uh, that just gives them some context as they're reading it off to everybody who's, who's on the webinar. Um, and SoundCloud links really are the best. There's no ads. We can just pull them up without downloading. So please send SoundCloud links if possible. I'll leave this up for one second so you can write it down or take a screenshot and then We'll pass it over to Kanita. All right, and with that, we'll bring in Kenita Hickman from Imagine Milwaukee. All right, take it away. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, happy Monday, I guess. So um, as Brian mentioned, I am the Director um, of Artist Support and Outreach with Imagine MKE. We are the Chamber and Commerce for Arts and Culture. And so, um, our work is around amplifying, convening, and connecting um, the entire arts 
and culture sector. Um, yeah, so my work specifically is in working with um, artists of all disciplines across industries. Um, so that includes podcasters, writers, visual artists, performing artists, you name it, the whole gamut. Um, and that's kind of an extension of the work that I've done here in Milwaukee um, with working with independent artists in management and branding. And so one of the things that prior to Corona that um, came up for me in my job was that artists were looking for um, resources that made them feel well-rounded. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about a couple of those immediate resources that I think artists can tap into that prior to Corona, um, I would not have suggested. And so Brian mentioned that um, in a previous workshop, unemployment was talked about, but I really wanna circle back to that. Um, first of all, if you are not receiving unemployment, um, I definitely encourage you to apply for it. Again, months ago, I would have never suggested this because um, the requirements to apply for unemployment also included work search. And so um, having worked in that workforce um, development industry, I know that most case managers would not consider I applied for a grant or I've been working on a commission piece as um, work. That is not the case now. Now the work search requirement is waived. And so again, um, everybody is eligible for unemployment. The exceptions would be if you are somebody um, who can work from home for pay. So if you're someone like me who was able to work from home, work remotely and be compensated for that. Or if you are currently receiving sick time or PTO. Um, you are not eligible for that. Um, so again, that opens the door for everybody. I know right now, as of last night, their system was not set up to support um, independent artists, contractors. There's going to be a separate application process for it, but it should be ready within the next couple of days to the end of the month. So um, please keep that on your radar. Please apply for it. Um, they are also adding an additional um, $600, I believe, a week for folks. And so they're still working out what that looks like. But again, I'm telling you, as somebody who's, uh, I don't know if I can say this on a recorded call, but I've been fired a couple times. So I've had to get unemployment. And I'm telling you, like, when you need it, it is helpful. And knowing that this was a door that was not available for creatives prior please take advantage of it. I would say the same for food share. Again, something else a couple months ago, I would not have suggested because of that work search requirement. That is now off the table and they are giving folks that maximum benefit. So for someone like me um, who's single and doesn't have children, I think the maximum benefit is like $200. Again, $200 that can just go towards food that doesn't have to come out of your unemployment that is a benefit. So please, please, please um, apply. And that's something that you can apply for right now. So um, I would certainly suggest you do that. Um, in terms of music resources, because I know this is um, more Wisconsin-based um, musicians, one of the ones that we're talking about in the office now is um, artistrelief.org. And so artistrelief.org is a coalition of um, national arts orgs, but they're able to grant artists um, up to $5,000. Um, and there's not a residency requirement attached to that, like um, some of the other uh, grants that we've seen come across. And so again, artistrelief.org, I would definitely um, take a look at that. They do have apl application um, deadlines. So there's about four to five of those. They're starting applications in April and I think hoping to end the fund in September. So um, I would definitely, and that's gonna be open to all artists. And so I'll take a step back and say, one of the things that I found with looking for grants is that for musicians, um, there's not a ton. 
um, there's some music grants and then there's things for like all artists, um, but not as many as I was hoping to find. Um, so artistrelief.org is definitely one um, that I would encourage you to take a look at. Also Music Cares, which I'm sure um, some of you are, are familiar with. One of the things with the Recording Academy is most independent artists don't think they qualify because they may not be a member of the Recording Academy. This Music Cares um, initiative, their um, coronavirus relief fund, you are able to apply. I checked the website yesterday. So again, get involved with that. That's what it's there for, not only for corona, but, but post-corona. I know they have different, um, they have like funds for when, you know, if you're on the road and your car um, gets broken into or vandalized, or, you know, um, you need some medical insurance support because you're not able to get insured. And so that's just a great resource for independent artists as well, that um, a lot of independent artists don't often tap into. Um, there's another one, artscovid.org. And I may actually just pull that one up and share my screen. So hold on one sec. And this one I really like because of all of the resources that were available. So I am going to share my screen. My tabs look a mess, so please no one judge me. Uh, this one. And share. So this is the most comprehensive um, resource that I found thus far. It allows you to indicate um, where you are, where you're from, what are you worried about. So everything from emergency funding and grants to temporary and remote work opportunities. I think right now we're still in a little bit of a state of panic, like, oh my gosh, what are we doing? Um, but I also think in this process, we also have to start thinking midterm and long term. And so how do we get folks back to work once they're able to get food, hopefully through food share, and a little bit of money in their pocket, hopefully through unemployment and some of the other grants that are on the table. Um, once their housing is secured here in Wisconsin, um, I know there was an order passed that is preventing land landlords from kicking folks out, which is great. Um, so once those things are secured, what can you do next? So emergency funding and grants, um, temporary remote work opportunities. So you can click that and scroll down. Obviously, a lot of folks are going to need this option because we can't really leave our house. Um, again, unemployment, free resources. And that is artscovid.org. So A-R-T-S COVID.org. Again, one of the more comprehensive um, spaces. So I went and checked out free internet from Spectrum. I couldn't see on the website where that link was, but if you are currently um, receiving internet services from Spectrum, I would definitely suggest you giving them a call to see how you can make sure um, you can get connected with this opportunity. Um, yeah, this is probably one of my favorite ones that I've seen, again, because it gives you the option um, to look at different things and to be able to connect with different opportunities locally and, and abroad. And so I do think that, that that is a good one. While I am here, we can also go to the Arts Relief. Uh, I think that's artsrelief.org. Mm -hmm. Nope, that's not it. So hold on, you guys are gonna see my presentation notes. Oh wait, that should have been it. So this is one, like I said, from, so NMKE, we had a grant as well, Artist Relief Fund that we recently closed. And so in our communication to folks who are still on the waiting list um, and to folks who've already received funding, we're sending this information out. Go over to Artist Relief. Um, again, it's to support artists during the COVID-19 crisis, Coalition of National Arts Grant Makers. 
um, across the United States, and this is for artists across the United States. So you can see here there is there are some um, eligibility requirements. Um, none of them really restrict you based on where you're you're currently living. So um, that is a good one. And again, that's at artistrelief.org. So part of my search today as well took me to um, a few other websites. And so I can pull up some of those now. Arts Board, COVID. So actually, I want to take you to MARN. So one of the things about MARN is MARN is often thought of as just um, a visual arts um, coalition. They do have a large representation of visual artists. However, they are an artist resource network. And so there's going to be some opportunities here that you can plug into as well. And so towards the bottom, they have um, their links. So again, Milwaukee Spree and Income-Based Clinics, if you need that. Um, because again, with my role at Imagine MKE, as much as we want to connect people with funding, a lot of the feedback that we got prior to COVID-19 was around, I'm missing some of the essential things that um, would help me to live a better life while I'm also um, making art. So here you can find some um, resources as well. I'm gonna scroll down to the art specific resources and arts organizations. So Surf Plus, this is another website that I have listed in my notes of um, a great resource for folks as well, the Artist Safety Net. And so this is at surf, C-E-R-F plus dot org. And they make it really easy for you to get to the information. So get help. And this is where you can actually begin to apply. The other button, um, resources, is going to give you a link like a lot of the um, other websites. I'll also mention in thinking about food in case, because um, I think food insecurity is really, really important. Um, if you are hungry, do go to Tandem. So I know Tandem is one of the restaurants here in the city. The only one that I know of that is actually giving out free meals from 11 to 4, um, I believe right now, Monday through Friday. And um, yeah, I think that's super important to key into as well. I know um, other restaurants are donating meals um, to Tandem so that they can feed other people. Um, so if that is something that you're interested in, check out Tandem's Facebook page. They post the menu every day and they post the instructions on how you can go and receive um, a free meal. And I know that's something that um, restaurants across the country are doing for um, the community, but also the creative community. So please plug into that. That just came to my mind. Okay. Um, so we went to surfs, we went to, we did not go to arts board. So we can check out their page too. Are there any questions thus far? I saw someone had posted something in the chat. So I wanna make sure that I get back to that. That question was, is there any funding for self-employed musicians? And it seems like you've been sort of going through a list of funding resources for yeah, so all of these are for self-employed musicians, um, which again, I think is so key because often entrepreneurs, self-employed musicians um, are not considered in the workforce. And so everything that I've brought up today is specifically for um, self-employed musicians, um, whether you're part-time or full-time, um, and really specifically for musicians too. Again, I'll be doing a similar presentation tomorrow um, with an arts um, collective. And what's available for visual artists, I get emails on that daily. Um, musicians, not as much, but there's a couple music convening orgs here in the city as well that I would suggest you reach out to. I did not, um, I went to their websites and didn't see anything but I encourage you to maybe shoot an email or call them. The first one is Whammy, and that's Wisconsin Area Music Industry. Um, 
again, I went to their website and didn't see anything, but I think it's worth an email or um, a DM on their Facebook page to just say, hey, what resources are you doing? Do you have access to, to support um, independent artists during this time? And Madison has a um, similar one called The Mamas. So Madison Area Music Association. Again, I went to their website as well for the purposes of this call. And um, I didn't see anything on the website, but again, I think it's worth a call to just see um, what they may have as a music convening org um, and what they may have access to, because they may have access to some resources that um, are hyper-local um, for them as well. So that's Madison, but Whammy is the Wisconsin area um, music industry. And so I would consider reaching out to them too. I also took the opportunity to look at the City of Milwaukee page. They have a list of grants. Some of them are freelance um, and self-employed musicians specific. Not a ton there, but I think anything you can get access to at this point is going to be helpful. And then this is the Arts Board of Wisconsin's page. And so as you scroll down, you can actually click the links um, versus like trying to click them up here. That's not going to work. Um, trust me, I tried it. Didn't work. So emergency funds for artists and arts orgs. So here, our administrators of Color Network, BIPOC artists, um, they do have a GoFundMe page. Again, I will reach out to them and see how you can connect to um, applying. Springboard for Arts, which is who we modeled our um, grant after, that's going to be uh, location specific. Um, but again, they have other resources there as well, in addition to another comprehensive list um, of relief efforts across the country that you may be eligible for. So are there other questions? Is there anything else, um, Mag and B, that I should, I should cover? So nobody has uh, dropped anything else in the chat box um, so far. Um, okay. I think uh, I have a question, and I'm not sure if you guys have access to this type of information, but I don't know if you touched on, like, in particular, like food um, services, like for artists or for anyone, like, is there food banks or anything in, in that space? Well, definitely food banks, but again, food share, I think, is going to be your best resource being able to apply for food share um i know for sure you can do um that application online and then do a, um an interview over the phone and again that they were doing that before um coronavirus covid19 so i would apply for that as soon as you're done with the series of calls today that i'm telling you like when i was a public ally I was then eligible for food share. And I was a little like embarrassed at first, like, oh, when I go to the store to pay for this, people will know. But I am telling you, like, that is something immediate. That is something you can do right now today. You do not have to go hungry if you're going hungry. And again, these are things that we, I was dealing with, with artists prior to COVID. Um, folks wanting to know, how can I get insured? Um, folks needing to know how do I eat like sometimes this these checks that I'm getting from you know after percentages are taken off of these grants and whatnot like I'm struggling to eat I'm struggling to pay rent so that is something that you can do in real time today um, so that you're taken care of in addition to um, and if you know there's going to be a little bit of time before you get your card I imagine to be able to um, use those services um, the other thing that I would um, suggest is reaching out to, to food pantries. So there's um, different churches that have food pantries, and I can do a quick Google search now. And then Tandem. Tandem is something you can do right now today. Guaranteed they are serving, they are giving away food for free from 11 to 4 today. So if you are hungry, you should mute your microphone, you should call them, 
you should tell them you need a plate and you should arrange um, the opportunity to get up there so that you can actually um, obtain food. And, and so, I oh, oh, go, go ahead. Sorry, I want to jump in. Um, I got an email just now saying that the chat is closed for participants. Uh, there is know. there is a Q&A section, so the chat's gonna, the chat will stay closed, but the, the Q&A section is where you wanna drop questions um, for the webinar. Thanks. And it looks like in the Q&A there's two, okay. Most food share applicants are getting full benefit per situation during COVID. Yep, thank you, Kia. That is very, very true. Um, and I'm telling you, even if you're a single person and you're only getting up to $200, so I'm a single person, no children. When I was getting it, I only got up to the most, $200. Um, that shit is helpful. I'm sorry, can I say shit on a recorded call? No problem, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. So um, it's super helpful when you don't have to take that out of your monthly budget for other things that you'll be working on um, or that you need to pay. Like seriously that is something you can do right now today and i think if you do anything today it should be that you don't have to go hungry um it is unfortunate that right now um you cannot use your food share card to do food delivery which is something that i think everyone should have access to um but at the very least you won't go hungry all of the grocery stores, including Whole Foods, um, except EBT cards. I know it because I used mine at Whole Foods. So you can go anywhere with that card um, and be able to get the food that you enjoy to eat. I mean, and I think that's a dignity thing, right? Like, what if I like to eat organic? And what if I like this and like that? You can do all of that with your food share card. Um, so at least in that regard, you don't have to limit too much how you've been living because you have access to food now and you have access to food that you enjoy eating. Um, so I would definitely do that. Foodpantries.org um, is where you can go to also look at some of the food pantries in the city. And a lot of this is going to be word of mouth. So talking to folks who are um, parishioners at local churches, and again, I don't know what the parameters are going to be in terms of um, do you need to have a face mask when you go or are they able to do drop offs? But in the interim, if your situation is dire, definitely consider food pantries um, and look at what's happening in your community because guaranteed there's a church somewhere near you, maybe even in walking distance that you can go to so that you're not hungry. And I think right now, to me, that that matters, that folks don't have to go hungry. Yep, EBT even works at farmer's markets in Illinois. Now, I don't know what the status is of um, farmer's markets right now. Again, can you go in person? But I do know that um, you can use them at, at um, farmer's markets here in Wisconsin too. So everywhere from Milwaukee to Mequon, you can use that card to get fresh produce. Um, so do that as well. Um, get the card. I can't say it enough. Like, yep, we can talk about music grants and all that, but get the card. Get the card. Do not go hungry. Um, the new Music Solidarity Fund. I would love to know more about that. So let me, let's pull that up. So this is an artist led initiative, it looks like, um, that is supporting um, artists right now as well. And so, let's see, up to 500 for musicians who have a project involving a living composer. So I don't know how many folks will actually be eligible to apply for this, but again, like shoot your shot, shoot your shot. It's better to try to see if you apply versus presuming that, like let them tell you no, you don't qualify versus you kind of making that presumption. 
Um, and I'm seeing a lot of that as well. Like some things are not um, eligible for everybody. I think a lot of artists in the hip hop scene are going to be nervous to apply for grants, just like, uh, like, will my genre get funded? But I think if you're a musician, regardless to what type of music you're doing, try to get access to some of this money that can serve as a bridge until we all figure out what this looks like moving forward. Do you know how long after the grant deadlines we should expect to hear if we are awarded the various grants? Typically, that's going to be answered in the Q&A section um, uh, or the frequently asked questions of each grant. I know with our grant, we were very clear that we closed the application process on Wednesday night. We closed the funding process on Thursday night. And then we were sending emails out by end of day Friday. So folks were getting notified either way, Friday by 7 p.m. That's a little after close of business, but Friday, 7 p.m. Um, as to whether they were getting funded, whether they weren't getting funded, or whether they were getting funded and they were on the waiting list and we would, um, we would get back to them the following Friday to let them know if we had the funds to answer that. Okay, now I'm curious. I'm like, what's up with these dismissed questions? Okay, I already answered all those. Cool. Thanks. Yes. All right, so any other questions? I tried to at least come up with something comprehensive that would um, support folks in the immediate future, but also long-term. I'm gonna say it again, because I feel like I haven't said it enough. Please apply for the food share card. I don't want anyone or their families to go hungry. And now is the perfect time because you don't have that work um, requirement. I know graphic designers who tried to apply for it before as a freelance and they couldn't, or they would apply and were told like, well, that's not a real job. You need to work at like Target Distribution Center. That's not happening now. You can apply. You can continue to do the work that you're doing. Like they've waived all of that for unemployment and for food share. So please get access to both of those, those um, opportunities because to be quite frank, at some point, this grant money is going to dry up. And the grant money is really meant to hold you until you can get to something a little bit more um, permanent um or semi-permanent it's really just a bridge to get you over the troubled water so definitely apply for every grant you you qualify for if there's anything i can do um through my capacity as director of artist support and outreach if there's other things that i can connect you to feel free to email me at k hickman h-i-c-k-m-a-n at imagine mke.org. And so anything I can do, I mean, all of us at Imagine MKE, we're full-time. We are still doing a full workload. Um, we're pivoting some of our, our events that we've been doing, but still doing a full workload, still here to support you as a musician. So put us to work um, so that we can make sure we're doing everything we can to amplify and, and support you. Okay, so what's the email address again? My bad. It is K, as in kite, or king, Hickman, H-I-C-K-M-A-N, at imagine, M-K-E dot org. Full disclosure, I am a little behind in responding to emails. Um, I've got like... 400 in my inbox so i'm working on it so but i also have a, a note up that says hey um give me a couple days to respond back so if i don't respond back right away give me 24 hours 36 hours I'll, I'll get back to you this is probably random maybe it's not but where can i go that supports recording your music and new beats um are you talking about in terms of like a Studio, or are you talking about grants that support producers? Because I would argue that some of these grants 
um, that are open for artists, so that are open calls for artists as a whole or open calls for musicians as a whole. Oh, you talking about studios. Oh, fam. I don't know. That's tough. Do you have a mask? I wouldn't want to go into no studio. Yeah, you but maybe stay away from studios. <laughs> like, I'm going to be honest. I'm driving my family absolutely crazy. I am waking up early, wiping down doorknobs. I am wiping down faucets. I am spraying people when they cough. I made a homemade disinfectant um, that's non-toxic, so it's okay to spray people with it. Just kidding. I don't know. So I have been absolutely freaked out. So I wouldn't go to a studio. I don't really know what studios are open right now either. Um, yeah, I would definitely wait to record your music. Definitely wait to record it. Yep. Are there any other questions, Mag, Brian, Miss uh, Key? Uh, yeah, I think you've covered, uh, you know, the, the points obviously that we had on the front end, and then um, the Q and A box here is empty as well. So, just want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for all the info, and uh, stay safe over the next few weeks as we continue to navigate everything that's going on. Yes, absolutely. All of y'all stay safe. It's a pleasure to meet you. I don't want to mispronounce your name, Miss Key. Sway. Kanita Sway. Yeah. Like how, Sway? Okay, got it. So yeah. nice meeting you, Sway. Thank you, uh, B and Mag, for the opportunity. And again, for everybody listening, if there's anything we can do at um, Imagine MKE, to connect you, to convene you to opportunities, to connect you to resources, um, including food share, whatever, let us know. We don't want anybody to go hungry. We don't any, want anybody to go homeless. We doing what we can during this time. So um, put us to work. Appreciate Anita, it. can you give us the exact link for them to apply for the food share? Or apply for food share? Yeah, absolutely. I can give you the, um, where would I put that? I can definitely put, give you the link you can send it to um, Brian Wisconsin. and then we'll send everybody like a resources email right after this. But I definitely wanted them to have that link in case they didn't know where it was. All right. Now I just gotta okay, wait. Let me stop share. So you guys also get to see me navigating Zoom. Which has <laughs> been my whoop. Okay. B, how do I send it to you? I'm just gonna email it to you. Yeah, just email it to me and we'll we'll follow yes, up. We'll do that. Thank you, Sway. All right. Well, I guess that's it for me then. All right. Well, uh, again, appreciate it and stay safe. Um, I'm sure you hear from some of the artists today. Cool. I'm, I'm hoping so. All right. You guys have a great day, great rest of your week, and um, be safe. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you.